Welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to be talking about how I make these melamine molds for casting uh, resins in. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions about what am I talking about melamine, what is that, uh, where do you get it, and, and how do you make the things because I'm having difficulty. So I thought I'd just do a kind of a quick run through. These things are pretty simple to make, but um, I, I, I know that, you know, the first couple that I made definitely weren't that great. And I've learned a few tricks kind of things and, you know, tips that I can pass on. Um, and just kind of go through how I make them um, and, and give you kind of the, you know, the skinny on what what size things need to be and all that kind of stuff. So uh, basically melamine, when I say melamine, I'm talking about particle board that has melamine uh, skins, you know, like veneers basically glued on. Um, you can get it in sheet form. I know back in the day you used to be able to get a three quarter inch sheet of melamine for, I don't know how much it was, but you could get them pretty, pretty easily. Today... I think you can get about a two foot by four foot sheet at Home Depot. So you'll have to look around at the home centers, ask them if they have particle board with the melamine veneer. Uh, worst case scenario, you should be able to get it at your local hardwood dealer, uh, you know, where you get your, your woods and places that have the cabinet grade plywood. They should be able to get this stuff. So um, to be honest, uh, three quarter inch is way overkill. You don't need it that thick. Um, I'm personally going to try, I'm going to have to go to Reno now and uh, go to the hardwood dealer and see if I can get half inch because I think that's the optimal thickness for this stuff. You don't need it that big. So um, you can find half inch, that'd be cool. Three quarter inch works fine. So just to start, so your sides are all gonna be ripped to the same you know, width height. So I'll just take a piece, rip it, maybe two pieces to the same width so that I can cross cut them later. Then I'll take a, another piece and make a base out of it um, and just rip that to whatever width you need. So the dimensions of the base need to be whatever you need the, the mold, you know, your final casting. That's what size uh, the base needs to be. Uh, because you're going to take the base and wrap pieces around all four sides of that. And so what's left is going to be your casting area. Okay, so once you've gotten, you know, your pieces ripped off you know, on the table saw or whatever, um, you'll, you'll have your pieces. Now, what I recommend doing first is cross-cutting, you know, getting the size of the base. You're going to want to rip one side square and then flip it around, get your miter gauge set up, <clears throat> and then cut it to length. So I would put a stop on my miter gauge fence so that, you know, once you've gotten that, that length, whatever it needs to be dialed in for the base, cut that out so you got your piece. And then take two more pieces, let's see here, you know, take one of your other pieces, cut that other, you know, one side square, flip it around and cut it the same length as you just did on this one. That'll give you three pieces, one is the base, and then the other two are going to be sides, and all three of these are going to be the same length. Then, uh, you know, cut out two other pieces. Basically, you'll you'll take that other stick, whatever's left over, and what I do is I just uh, I'll cut one side square, and then I'll just come in here and met and just it's arbitrary. It doesn't really matter that much as long as it covers the whole thing. Mark it, reset my miter gauge, and then cut two more pieces. At that point, you're going to have all five pieces, and they should fit pretty well. Um, of course. <laughs> You won't get very good results if your you know, blade is not 90 degrees on your table saw or your you know, miter gauge fence isn't square to the blade. So make sure that your saw and everything is set up properly. That's the first thing to, to make sure you have set up so that you can get good results. But assuming that you've done all that and you've got all your pieces cut, now you need to start screwing it together. All right, so I had to shoot in multiple days. That's why I'm wearing different clothes. but. The next step is you want to screw together your, your mold. So first thing you want to do is pre-drill. Now I, I use like a tapered drill bit with a countersink on it. I think it's a Rockler item uh, and, I, and I try and get it pretty far out there. The other thing is I'm going to be using inch and a quarter screws from Home Depot. They're just the normal wood screws. So what I do, you don't need to use a Festool table, obviously. The only thing is it's flat, and I know that. Uh, you know, you could use your workbench, an assembly table, your table saw. Uh, 
I just do it a specific way because I have this table, uh, but you can kind of modify your setup to do kind of the same thing. So <clears throat> I use their little stops. They're just basically dogs. Set them up. I get a clamp. So I use a parallel clamp. And uh, so I'm just going to assemble this real quick. So you got everything kind of set up. What I do is I put a clamp over the, the two end cap, the, one, the ones that span the entire distance, just to kind of cinch it up and keep it somewhat together. So I just kind of, like I said, just kind of get things lined up a little bit and then just tighten her down. Now, one of the one of the important things that, you know, once you've kind of put some pressure, now I'm not clamping the heck out of it. This is particle board in the first place and you don't need a lot of pressure. I'm just getting the sides lined up uh, by squeezing the two end caps together. So, <clears throat> everything's, you know, aligned for the most part. The end caps are gonna be the second part. First thing I do is I make sure that everything's referencing to the table, because that's the flat and you want it to be flat on the bottom. Now, get this little camera in here. A little bit closer. Yeah, you can kind of see. So, all I do is I, I just butt it up against there. Now, the thing is, I like, I get it to the edge of the table so that I can get the drill in there. That's pretty much the only thing that's going on here. And then I, I make sure that I'm pushing both the base piece and this side that I'm going to be drilling down. But all I do is just uh, start drilling. That's about it. So I put two screws on each side piece that fits in between the end caps. I don't put a ton of screws in this because it just doesn't need it. The two screws holds this thing together real well. All right, so I got the two screws. I just use, I have a different screwdriver gun just to make things easier. Now, here's, here's a good tip also. This is, first of all, this is a like a 10 or 12 volt, kind of a weak uh, screw gun type thing. And I have the, the clutch on like eight. You don't need to slam these things home. The only thing you're doing is cinching it up. So once again, I put pressure down on the table and I just let that clutch kick in. And, and like I said, you really, th what I have this set for it may be slightly different because this is kind of a weaker, different thing. Um, I'd probably put it on eight. I, I think they're about the same. I have a Makita, and I would probably use about eight on this thing too. So either way, just make sure that you don't have it set to a really high, uh, you know, high setting on the clutch. Let the clutch take over so you're not stripping out the particle board. All right, so I do the same thing on the other side. Again, one of, you know, the kind of important thing is to make sure that all the pieces, when you're you're drilling them, you're referencing them off the base, off the table, whatever's flat, and uh, then just drill them home. Alright, so that's as easy as that can be. Now the next thing is the uh, end caps. Now I only put three screws in the ends. I put one in the in the bottom down here and two up kind of a little higher that are screwing into the, the side walls. So I start with those first. I just butt this thing up and I, I, I put the stop just because there's a clamp on here and all this stuff. I put the stop uh, in line with the side because that's where I'm going to be screwing it. Um, and, you know, just try and make sure that your end caps are, you know, pretty much even. And then just 
again, make sure everything's referencing and flat. You don't even have to go too high on this. I just put it about three quarters of the way up. Do the same thing on the other side. Uh, use the stop, there we go. Put a couple screws in. So I'm gonna do that on the other side as well. And then I just, I put the screws in the ends on the, you know, on the higher end. And then once that's together, it ain't going anywhere. I just flip it up, drill the bottoms and I'm good to go. So I'm gonna hammer these home and then we'll kind of talk about the final steps on this thing. So I hope that was helpful. These aren't hard to put together. It definitely helps to have a little bit of practice. You know, my first ones were not perfect. I think I've kind of gotten it down to a science at this point, but uh, you know, the big things are make sure that you pre-drill with the correct drill bit and deep enough and all that stuff, you know, pre-drill correctly. Uh, don't hammer these screws home because this particle board will just crack and split on you. And then the other thing is make sure you're referencing when you're pre-drilling and, and uh, assembling it. Make sure everything's registering and, and, you know, reading off of a flat surface and not moving around. You should get this thing together real well and uh, it should work good for you. So you can use it as is. Uh, you know, I would definitely spray it with stoner because this particle board stuff, if any of the resin seeps into the cracks, it's gonna grab onto that stuff. It's still gonna be easy to get out for the most part, but you will have to take it apart and maybe kinda take both ends off and stuff, depending on the sever severity of <laughs> how many gaps you have. Um, so spray it with stoner, it should work good. I do, uh, a silicone caulking in the corners just to make sure that you know any gaps you know basically it's sealed there's there's no way that the resin is going to get stuck to anything at that point so I'm just going to kind of quickly show you how I do that I all I use is just normal caulking silicone stuff I got a little tube of it here and this is a I don't know it, I was reading all the backs of these things it's it's just a clear I think or white it's white colored but all I did was find the one that was actually that dried the quickest. Um, either way, let this sit overnight after you apply the silicone and everything like that. Just make sure it's it's you know cured fully. The main reason for that is alumilite or any resin is going to heat up, and so you just you want to make sure that that silicone's cured. Um, but I'm going to quickly kind of show you how I do this, and uh, the one thing is. If you're gonna do the silicone, you do not want to be taking this thing apart every time. So, and you don't have to. That's that's a nice thing. If there's nothing for it to grab onto, all you do is dump it, tip it over, and it just falls right out. You know, you're casting. So, I've never had to take any of these apart once I uh, use the silicone, except for one time, and that was because I didn't use stoner. So, you will have to use the mold release spray every time. And I'm gonna tell you, give it a really good, you know, shot of that stuff the first one, but. After that, just spray it down and your castings will come right out. So I'm just gonna show you how I do this. I usually get a, get a paper towel for the excess. I, I just put a bead around the corners. So I'll get up here close with this thing. Hopefully you'll get a good shot of it. All right, so hopefully you'll, between these two cameras, you'll get a good view of this. Take a look at this thing. Okay, so I just run a bead in the corner. Uh, I don't, I don't get excessive with it, but I, I definitely you don't want it. You want to get enough in there. Hopefully, I'm not totally in the way. And then all I do is come with my finger, just wipe it up, and I'm kind of pushing it, and then I'm going to pull it up. Pull this up right here. I'll do that again. That's a little bit excess. If you have, you know, quite a bit of excess, just pull it right out. So I'm just trying to kind of smooth this out as much as possible, but I don't want to pull all the 
silicone out either. Turn this around. All right, so that's all there is to it. It's pretty simple. Uh, make sure you let the silicone cure overnight before you use this. Uh, Alumilite and all these resins get pretty high temperature, so I would definitely recommend just, just you know, let it sit on the shelf before you use it. Make sure the silicone's good to go, and uh, make sure that you're using the stoner spray with this. If you do that, all you gotta do is just tip it over, and your casting comes right out. It's amazing. So hopefully this was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. You can email me at zach at nvwoodworks.com, and I'm on Facebook and Twitter. You can find me there. So I, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you put one of these things together, if you get good results. If you have any issues, you know, definitely email me or, or hit me up in the comments, and I'll try and help out. Other than that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thank you to all the subscribers. Thanks for supporting me, you know, with all the comments and questions and all that stuff. I really love it. So... Thank you very much. I will see you in the next video.